Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, I shared with you how you can set the white, the gray and the black point in Affinity Photo using a curves adjustment layer. If you haven't seen that video yet, I will put a link in the description. In today's video, we will have a look how we can use this technique in a more creative way for portrait photos. In order to use it for portrait photos, we will sample colors only from the face. In this example, I have sampled the highlight color from the nose, the mid-tone color from the cheek and the shadow from the hair. Using a curves layer, we can convert these three colors to white, mid-gray and black. For more information on how to do that, check out the link in the description. Now let's make a copy of this Curves Adjustment layer and move this copy to the image. The result is quite interesting, but not exactly what we are looking for. If I change the blend mode of the Curves Adjustment layer to Luminosity, we get a much interesting result. First, there is no color shift. And second, we have emphasized the highlights and the shadows, especially in the face. In some cases, the result might be really good, but in this image, it's a little bit too much. Let's control the effect by changing the blend range. If I lower the effect on the shadows, we get a much pleasing result. It creates instantly more depth in the image. If I disable the adjustment, you immediately notice how flat the original image was. If you find the shine in the highlights too much, you can always lower the opacity to blend it in the way you like. Have a look at the before and the after. What an amazing difference it makes. Another blend mode that works very well is the soft light blend mode. Depending on the situation, this might change the color a bit, but could maybe fit the composition very well. Anyway, let's set it back to luminosity and put the opacity to 100%. As this curve in almost all cases will darken the shadows and brighten the highlights, we can use it as a kind of an automatic dodge and burn. If I reset the blend range and change the blend range so that it only affects the shadow and the highlights, we get this very subtle effect where the shadows are darkened and the highlights are brightened, giving more contrast to the image. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Optionally, if you don't want it to apply to the background, you can invert the mask of the Curves Adjustment layer with Command-I, Control-I on Windows, and use a white brush to paint in back the effect on the face. Here is the before and here is the after. Let's have a look at a different image. Same idea. I take the bright, mid and the dark color from the face. In this case, for the bright color, I have used the left cheek where the sun is shining, the mid-tone from the right cheek and the dark color from the hair. Here is the curves adjustment which neutralizes these colors to white, gray and black. Just like the first image, I will move the curves layer to the image, which generates, as before, an interesting image. If I change the blend mode to luminosity, we get a very pleasing result out of the box. But just as with the first image, I can change the blend range, not to touch the darker parts of the image. The result is even more pleasing. Also, the soft blend mode works very nicely too. We can also apply this technique to black and white portraits, but with a little twist. Let me paste a black and white image and set up the tones. So again, the idea is to sample only from the face and decide what parts of the face should be the highlight, the mid-tone and the shadow. So in this case, the area at the tip of the nose will be the highlight, the mid-tone I will select from the cheeks and the shadows from around her neck. I will add the curves layer and because we are working with grayscale, I will set the mode of the curves adjustment to grayscale. 
Let me add the three sample location points and position them on top of these boxes. If we look closely, the bright box is already white, so we can skip this one. Let me increase the mid-tone value until this has a value of 128 and we'll decrease the shadow color until it becomes zero. Now, time to move the curves adjustment to the image. As with the color images, the initial result is not an improvement. Also, setting the blend mode of the adjustment to luminosity has no effect as we are already working in black and white. But if we set it to multiply, we get a very nice result. If I adjust the blend range so that we don't affect the highlights, the result is pretty amazing. Let's have a look at the before and the after. It is a quite strong effect. In order to neutralize it a bit, I will duplicate the adjustment and set its blend mode to lighten. Final step is to reverse the blend range so it only affects the highlights. Now we have a much more subtle result. During this process, we lost the sparkle in the eye because the first curve adjustment layer, which affected the shadows, also darkened the eyes. I will paint with black on the mask of this curve, removing the effect on the eyes and giving the sparkle back in the model's eye. The sparkle is even stronger because of the contrast. That looks amazing. Let's disable the second curve for comparison. Let me enable it back. I think it would look better if we disable the brightness on her lips. So let me mask that out from the second curve. Here it is without the second curve turned on which looks great by the way, and here it is when it's turned on. Pretty cool. Finally, we can adjust the opacities until we have a nice balance. So, this was the before, and this is the after. And here it is without the second curve. Both are definitely an improvement, which make the image more interesting because of the extra contrast and depth. I hope you like these tips. Feel free to experiment with the blend ranges of the curves adjustment, as these control the areas where it will be applied to. As always, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe or hit the like button. Until next time.